Hi, I'm Chris. Christopher is in the basement unconscious, so you're all stuck with me today. You're my friends now. We're having soft tacos later. Thursday Boot Company. I have owned the Cavalier Chelsea's for about three years now. And you're probably wondering, Christopher, I told you, he's not here. Did you take your medication this morning? No, 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 no. But also, how do they hold up? We're gonna talk about leather quality, design, comfort, but first, do you see this outsole? Do you see how it bows? That curling up is from three long years of exposure to the arid, gravelly, rocky Colorado environment. That's normal. I, I think. But what's not normal is that these boots are even here with us today. Oh my god, those boots are amazing. Are those the same ones? Don't worry, my friends. We're gonna solve that mystery at the end of this video. You see, these outsoles should have been worn through to my very feet by year two. I personally am a big fan of leather soles. I like walking in them. I like how they feel. They're flexible. They're comfortable. It's great, but they do wear down quickly, especially if you wear them daily in the winter or frequently on the abrasive florist floor of Colorado. These cute little buttons have single-handedly bought these leather-soled boots an extra year of wear, and they'll probably last through the next winter. These are TPU studs, tractor protected. Uh, and then you have the sole stitch, which is this thread right here, connects the outsole to the welt, which is also connected to the upper and everything else literally holds the whole boot together. It's basically gone. So why is this whole boot still together? I don't know, but I'm assuming it's because they use strong adhesives made from the bones of children. Are these boots durable? I guess? I haven't made any particularly compelling quantitative argument to make that statement or compared it to anything else on the market to even provide contextual meaning to the word durable. Is there even a point to this video? They're like the Toyota of boots. You know, they last forever, they're affordable, you can stick a machine gun on them and sell them to ISIS, and it just works. Is that a bad joke? I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble for that. Thursday, brought to you by ISIS. Okay. So are these boots any comfortable? Well, it depends on what you mean by comfortable. Comfortable pajamas are pajamas that you feel. You feel how soft they are on your body. And much like pajamas, running shoes, sneakers, you feel them, they bounce. Or for sneakers, they have foam insoles, they have padding that you can feel. They have squish. And Americans, we love our squish. The problem is when you expect squish from non-squish products. Quality stitched leather footwear, Goodyear welted footwear are non-squish products. Uh, can I do it? Let's see if I can do it. A comfortable Goodyear welted dress shoe or boot is not one that you feel in the same way you feel the squish of running shoes or sneakers. A comfortable Goodyear welted shoe sort of disappears. It's a lot like a suit. A comfortable suit isn't one that you feel, it's one that kind of disappears on you, but still makes you feel like sturdy and tight and put together. Oh my God, there's a wood chip in my eye. And that's because when you're wearing a suit, you're probably doing stuff that needs your full attention, like getting a haircut or lying to investment bankers about the risk profile of collateralized debt assets. Can you guys see me? I feel like I'm probably out of the shot. Do not be fooled by the common phrase that the cork bed in Goodyear welted footwear will mold to your feet. While this does refer to a very real phenomenon, it is not the feeling that you are probably conjuring of thick foamy insoles cradling your foot, providing a spring to every step. You know, the working title for this video is something like, Thursday boots after three years review. But I'm starting to wonder if a more honest title wouldn't be something like unmedicated man talks about boots for 12 minutes in the woods. In Goodyear welted shoes, this molding occurs over years and is honestly hardly noticeable. Are these boots comfortable? Yes, but primarily in the sense that they will disappear from your attention while still keeping you feeling firmly rooted to the ground. All right, can I get down from here? That's the question. These ones don't, but I do believe the newer Thursday boots do have like a thin pour on insole. So you will get at least a little bit of that squishy for a little while until it, you know, just sort of flattens out as pour on tends to do. Oh dear. 
Ugh. One more quick note on sizing. When I first ordered these boots, these are a US 8. Actually, I'll put my sizes up on screen for your reference. Uh, they fit me perfectly. We'll talk more a little bit about fit when we talk about last design. But basically when I bought these, I just ordered two pairs. I ordered eight and eight and a half because I wasn't certain which one would fit me. And I figured that makes more sense. And ordering an eight, it doesn't fit. Return it, order an eight and a half, and then I still feel like the eight fit better. And then, you know, whole thing. They make it pretty easy to just to make sure that you have the absolute right size. And that, again, is why, like these kinds of American companies that have this gratuitous return policy, it's really great for like first time buyers. Because when I first bought these boots several years ago, like I had no idea what was the right fit or what was the right size. When people talk about lasts, they are typically talking about dress shoes, and that is because dress shoes are made for explicitly aesthetic purposes. Discussions around boots, however, often overlook last design in favor of more practical concerns like durability and protection, and for good reason. Chelsea's straddle the line between utilitarian and cosmetic in their function. I often wear my Chelsea's in situations where I would otherwise wear loafers if the weather was nicer. So I feel it prudent to discuss the lasts of these boots. But there's actually not that much to talk about because these are pretty basic. These are basic American lasts for entry level boots. Is this a good spot to film? The last of a shoe is the model. It's the overall shape of the shoe. When you get above like three, four hundred dollars, a lot of why you're buying a shoe that expensive is because of the last. It's because of the kind of sculptural, artful quality of these products. Now at this price, really what you're looking for is not something that has a ton of sophistication to it. You're more just looking for something that's well proportioned. They're essentially just an oval, right? There's not a whole lot of curvature. One quality that I will note that you see a lot of in American last is like kind of a big, tall toe box midfoot area. When I put my feet in these around the instep, it's like a perfect fit, where when I press down on sort of the back end of the toe box area, there's actually quite a bit of space. Also the heel is like maybe slightly too big, my heel shifts around in it a little bit. But again, I wouldn't go any smaller because the instep is like a perfect fit. It would be tight if I went down any more in size. You'll notice in higher end boots, they tend to have a more slim profile. So it actually comes down more on the instep and flattens out on the toe. And that just gives the boot a little more slim, elegant, sophisticated of a profile. You know, I think part of that's just American taste. I think Americans, they don't want their boots or clothes in general to like really shout style. They want them to look good, but they won't, don't want them to be like too dressy. It's a pretty basic boot. It is well proportioned. I think the last is pretty good for what it is. Someone who wants something more dressy like Beckett Simonon might be a better choice in the same price range. Gridlin's a little bit higher in price. Carlos Santos even higher than that. Those start, you start to get into more like dress boots, like dress Chelsea's, where this is still kind of a functional Chelsea. Uh, what else do I have to talk about? Oh God. Oh, that's spiky. Oh. So the last thing I want to talk about today is leather quality. The leather of these boots, so first of all, it's soft. These will break in. I mean, they not really a break in period, at least in my experience. They just sort of, they're comfortable right out the gate. What you will notice is that like when I got my boots, you'll see they, one of them is like a bit shinier than the other. That's not because of me polishing them or anything like that. That's because one of them actually came like that. It came with like a smoother leather. Different hide, different part of the hide, not ideal. Now at the time, I didn't know, so I didn't really think too much about it, but that can happen. And you know, it's almost, there's something like almost pointless about talking about the leather coming with defects with a company like this because it's so easy to return them. Now that said, you know, that's never like optimal. You never want to get a bad product. As far as quality control goes, obviously I don't have the data points to like make a statement on the percent, uh, the odds that you'll get a defective product. But from what I've seen, the probability is reasonable that you get something that's defective and that's kind of fair at that price. Thursday, I'd say it's like, it's fine. <sighs> Again, it's like, I feel like I'm just talking to the air. Does anyone even care? This isn't exactly like substantial useful information. You're all just here to witness uh, whatever, whatever this is going on here. So I hope that provides some value. I don't know. I feel like this is not a good video. I'm just, ha I'm, I'm standing here having a crisis. Here's another video on how I turned my Thursday boots from this into this. Thank you.